So there are lots of different non-pharmacological interventions that are really helpful when managing people with dementia. So there are things like art therapy, music therapy, um, and we had an episode, one of our most popular MDT podcast episodes is episode 9.6, where we talked about music um, and dementia. Having exercise with family and friends and strength training is really good, and a good app for that is Keep On Keep Up. Um, and then we move into things like a regular and predictable and changing routine, um, making sure the patient's environment is constant and stress-free. And that's something we can think about when we're having patients inside the hospital, not moving them overnight, not moving them when it's dark and ensuring that we're orientating them really nicely. Um, for patients as well, we can think about behavioural management therapy and CBT therapies to try and improve how they're feeling. And also lots of people with dementia and their families and carers find places like dementia cafes, activity groups and community groups, a really helpful environment and supportive place for both families to get respite from their from caring for their loved ones. Also meet other people like them and people with dementia get stimulation from the activities that go on there. And finally, point number five, don't forget about the less common ones. So we have talked about how Alzheimer's and vascular dementia are by far the most common types of dementia. But we should keep in mind the other two subgroups and those are people with Lewy body dementia and people with frontotemporal dementia. So first Lewy body dementia presents with movement disorder usually but it is different from Parkinson's disease another movement disorder that we talked about previously. So Lewy body dementia often presents with a movement disorder at the same time at or around the same time as their dementia whereas with Parkinson's disease the dementia symptoms if the patient has any because they don't always have dementia symptoms with Parkinson's. These dementia symptoms in Parkinson's will present much later than the movement disorder. So when trying to differentiate between Lewy body dementia and Parkinson's disease, here are three tips for how to diagnose Lewy body dementia. So you can diagnose Lewy body dementia if the dementia symptoms develop first or two, if both dementia symptoms and the movement symptoms present together at the time of diagnosis, or if the dementia symptoms appear within one year of the movement symptoms. But if the dementia symptoms appear further down the line than one year after the movement symptoms come on, it is much more likely to be somebody with Parkinson's disease. Lewy body dementia is the third most common cause of dementia after Alzheimer's disease and vascular dementia, and it accounts for 5 to 10% of all dementia cases. In terms of what you might see in somebody with Lewy body dementia, apart from the movement disorders that we touched on, you are more likely to see hallucinations, delusions, and misidentification of familiar people in early Lewy body dementia than you might in somebody with Alzheimer's. You will more commonly see postural hypotension, dizziness, and urinary incontinence in early Lewy body dementia when compared with Alzheimer's. And also, you tend to see more sleep disorder in people with Lewy body than you might in somebody with Alzheimer's. And then finally, that last subgroup, frontotemporal dementia. This is quite rare. You don't see it too often. But as the name suggests, it affects the front and the sides of the brain. And because of the damage to these specific areas, this tends to lead to deterioration in the patient's behavior, personality, and they tend to also have difficulty with producing or comprehending language. Sadly, there are currently no treatments available for frontotemporal dementia. Some medications can be given to help treat the anxiety, depression, and agitation that goes along with it. But as we touched on earlier with the agitation meds, they may have limited effect. The illness can be accompanied by muscle weakness and coordination problems, and this will all need to be factored in when formulating a care plan with the wider MDT if you do happen to see somebody with frontotemporal dementia. So even though Alzheimer's and vascular dementia are by far the most common, it's important that we keep somewhere at the back of our mind the possibility that we might be dealing with a Lewy body or a frontotemporal dementia as well. So let's go back to Polly. She's 78 and we're going to put her case study on the screen now. Lovely. So if we think about six signs to look for in dementia, these include everyday tasks are difficult, being lost in familiar places, forgetting names and people, aphasia, where there's an inability to communicate as normal, not knowing the time or place, and mood changes. 
Well, if we look at Polly's story, she's got four of these six signs. Finding everyday tasks difficult, so when she talks about doing the crossword, and also when she's also talking about it taking her longer to prepare her lunch and having to get out old recipe books that she hasn't needed to bring out for decades because she was doing them from memory before. Um, she's forgetting names of people, um, so her grandchildren that she looks after. She's got some aphasia when she's losing her train of thought on the phone and completely forgetting what she's saying. Um, and also the mood changes where she's frustrated and anxious and upset because she doesn't know whether there's something wrong. So it's really important that we listen to the story, put it all together and think through those six signs. So in terms of what we might do as a hospital team, if we're looking after Polly, first of all, we'd want to get a collateral from her daughter. So we have heard a little bit from her daughter about how she's been over the phone, but it would be good if we got a full collateral history from her daughter just to hear what she has observed and to compare that with what Polly is saying and see do those stories match up or actually is there more to it that the daughter has seen that Polly isn't even telling us because sometimes with the best will in the world the patient might not remember to tell you everything simply because of the dementia process so that's where it can be really useful to bring in a family member. I think also patients might want to ignore some of the things and it's easier to bury your head in the sand they don't want to admit there's something wrong because they're scared of that diagnosis as well. Whilst Polly's with us in the hospital we can do a memory assessment so we could either do the ACE or the mini mental test. Um, and if we're seeing a cognitive deficit, um, then we'll get a referral to outpatient's memory clinic. Um, it would also be useful to do a CT scan of her head. And then when she goes to outpatient's memory clinic, they've got all the information and they're the ones that can make the diagnosis. Yeah, as we've mentioned, another great thing to do is to think of non-pharmacological interventions that could be introduced to help Polly. So we could try and help along with her daughter to plan a regular predictable daily routine for Polly to encourage Polly to have regular exercise, maybe a walk at the same time of day, every day in the afternoon. We could encourage Polly to get in touch with old friends, either through phone calls or letter writing. We could encourage her to meet friends and neighbours if she's physically able to do so as a way of boosting her social interaction and helping her mood. Uh, We could try and even do something like finding easier puzzles for her to do. If she's not able to do the crossword she previously was able to, we could try and find something more appropriate for how she is at the minute. You can get um, colouring books and other Sudokus specifically designed for people with dementia with the colours and contrast as well. So that's something to tell her daughter about she can have a look online for. And I also think maybe telling them about local dementia services, local dementia cafes is really useful too. Another thing to encourage Polly's family to do is focus on um, reminiscence therapies. Um, If Polly's short-term memory continues to decline and is causing her frustration, um, it might be a way to help manage her frustration and anxiety. So we've walked you through what we would do with Polly if she came to see us in hospital, and hopefully we've also given you a better understanding of dementia as a wider topic. Next time we come back, we will be looking at the topic of of end-of-life care. So please do join us for that. In the meantime... You've got a few things you can look through. You can go back to all our old videos, um, which will be at the link on the channel below. And you can also look up the MDT podcast episode that Georgie mentioned earlier about music and dementia. And that is series nine, episode six, and is well, well worth a listen. See you soon.